I am that I am. Hmm. Master John of magical service. Hmm. Here to do some magic with you today. Hmm. If you choose to join in. Hmm. Because you see, in real magic, we don't do it for other people. But sometimes we inspire it in other people. Hmm. Magic is for self, no one else. You do it for someone else, no matter how good your intentions are. It's really what's called black magic. Controlling and manipulating others. Hmm. And the environment around you. Now, magic is who you are. Mm, magic. Mm, real magic. It's your divinity. Oh. <laughs> and divinity. Oh. It doesn't act according to human agendas. It acts on hmm, divine knowing. Ah. Hmm. Real magic is not about fixing everything in your life. Hmm. Although it might get fixed. If that's, oh, if that's how it needs to be. Hmm. But a human gets frustrated because, well, it thinks that magic should be about hmm, doing the things that it wants done. And it isn't. Real magic comes from your soul. Because the soul understands why you're here. The soul understands what makes you happy. Oh, better than you, the human. It understands what makes all of this worthwhile. And if you let it, Hmm. If you let go of your agendas, ah, your soul, your divinity can bring in a magical and graceful life like you never imagined. Hmm. But you have to let it happen. Ah, we did a brilliant class about that a few months ago. It's called How to Change Your Life, and it's on our website. Hmm, you might want to check it out if you haven't. Or revisit it if you have. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, what a time. Hmm. What a time to be on earth right now. Ah, what a time to be on earth as a human. And what a time to be on earth as divinity itself, as soul expressing itself in a way it never could before. You see that veil that went both ways. It blocked the human from soul, from everything outside of the 
this perceived human reality. And it also blocked the soul in a way out into those other realms. Hmm. It was necessary so that you could have your experiences here on earth without distraction. But now that's all over. Now, soul is here. Divinity is here. Hmm. All the empty space between the particles that make up the atoms that make up, oh, your body. It's all lighting up with the light of divinity. Hmm. It's very different from the light of, for example, the sun. It's very different. It's the light of consciousness, of awareness. Hmm. And it's here. It's inside of you. It's been, hmm, in a sense you could say it's been asleep for all of your time on earth. And now it's waking up and is changing the very nature, the very structure of what you call reality. Ah. Hmm. And then you wonder why your body is feeling so crazy, why your mind is feeling so crazy, why everything around you seems to be going crazy. Hmm. It's because the very nature of reality is changing. Mm. The very forces that oh, seem to hold your reality together are changing. Mm. We're not going to de try to define how they're changing because that's a mental game that really doesn't mean anything. And it's very difficult to put into words that mean even a little bit. So just understand that it's all changing the very nature and structure of you, the human, and everything around you and everything inside of you is changing. No wonder you feel a little crazy. No wonder your mind isn't working so well lately and your body isn't working so well lately. Mm. Be with it. Don't fight it. Don't try to fix it. That just makes it worse. Be with it. Breathe with it. All of it. Breathe it in. It's your soul's job to take care of all of that now. Not yours as a human. Be with it. Hmm. As we record this, hmm, the energies are gathering for our Headbender's Guide to Opening Your Intuition, our second session, live in a few hours. Hmm, first session. Oh, it made John feel a little crazy. Hmm, he wasn't used to those kind of energies with a whole group of people watching in, in real time. Ah, when he went back through the recording and the process, the transcript, he realized there was so much there. Hmm. And there's going to be so much more in our upcoming sessions. So if you want to, you can still sign up. 
We haven't closed registration because you can always catch up with recordings. Once we're finished with this class, it will be available for you to purchase and go through. But if you'd like to get in on it now, there's still some, uh, there'll still be a couple of live sessions left. Um, hmm, sign up. We're having a great time. Hmm. And if you want to check out how to change your life, you'll find it on the website at johnmccurdy.com. Hmm. And soon we're moving to new technology and a new website called IamDivinity.com. Hmm. Yeah, we're still working on that, but it's coming. Ah, so. <clears throat> hmm. And while we're talking about classes, don't forget. Divinity in Experience. Coming up first week in July. Goes for three months. Well, that's just the beginning, really, but... Hmm. All right now it's a it's a three month class that will continue from there. Uh, divinity in experience, at least two sessions a week, probably a couple of recordings in between. Uh, we're gonna have a really good time in that class too. As we explore what it means for divinity to be present in our human lives hmm, right now. Hmm. So, ah, for now, let's have an experience. Hmm. I'll ask John to put some music on. Hmm. Our garden waterfall music. Uh, we'll put it in our ears for now, and then he'll edit the music into the recording. Uh, so the quality is better. Mm. Ah. So, take a deep breath. Mm. the music mm. imagine this beautiful green garden all around you mm. this beautiful garden imagines it a little bit like he always imagined the Garden of Eden. Mm, truly a place of myth, but also so real. So real, mostly in hmm, another reality. the human remembers and tries tries to bring into the mind shows up in 
very human terms, and that's okay. Uh, look around you. See the little stream running past. the flutes and the bells and the birds. Ah. Look out across the, the meadows, through the trees. Oh, so many flowers, beautiful flowers. And animals, every kind of animal. Huh. They're all in peace. Nobody's trying to eat anybody else. They're lounging around, enjoying the warm sunshine. looking at you they're watching they're watching this incredible light waking up inside of you beginning to shine out from you the light of divinity. Ah. There's a little pond nearby. Let's walk over there. Hmm. As you look in the pond, you see your own reflection. Ah. Look at the light shining out from you. You don't have to do anything to make it shine. <laughs> Nothing at all. In fact, if you try, that just kind of puts a shade around it. So don't try, just look. It is shining out of you. It's natural. It's, ah, uh, at this point, you can't stop it. there. It's shining. It's your consciousness. And it's shining into your body. Mm. Out of your body, out into the world. again at your body in the reflection. Hmm. You can almost see through it. You can see, if you look, the colors inside of it. Hmm. The turmoil or chaos almost colors oh, stirring all around inside of your body lit up by this light <laughs> triggered by this light oh look they're just colors they're the sign of transformation oh, there's nothing you need to do about them Yes, sometimes they hurt. There's still nothing you need to do about them except allow them. Feel them. They're finding their new place in a whole new reality. 
much more fluid and flexible reality. A much lighter, brighter reality. So let them, let your body go through what it's going through. Don't worry about it. You know, that's difficult for the human. It thinks maybe it's dying. Oh, and in a way it is. It's dying to everything it has ever been. Hmm. It's changing. At this time, it doesn't have to fall apart and go back to the earth, to the dust. This time, it's dying into a new birth, grand transformation, rebirth. The one Yeshua spoke of 2,000 years ago when he said, unless you die and are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, dear friend, look around you. You're looking at heaven itself, your own heaven. Hmm. And you have entered into it and now, oh, you're simply allowing the transformation to happen in a way that truly has never happened before. None of the Ascended Masters did what you are doing right now. Some of them were able to stay on Earth in their bodies for a time. Like Saint Germain, Katumi. Katumi might have the record. (laughs) But They didn't do it like you are doing it. They couldn't. The energies of mass consciousness, hmm, which is what your so-called reality actually is. The energies of mass consciousness simply couldn't contain that kind of light. So they had to keep some of it out. And then, and here you are, you're letting it all in, in a beautiful, wonderful, modulated way, so that it doesn't <laughs> burn out all the good parts of mass consciousness of your mass consciousness reality. Mm. So now you can be both at once. You can be divinity, soul, and human at the same time. You can be here in your own heaven and on earth, all at the same time. Hmm. So take another look in the the pond at you. Oh, look, just in the time we've been talking about this, you're glowing even brighter. Mm. Now let's walk over into the southern meadow. Mm. 
notice the flowers, beautiful flowers, flowers like you've never seen before. Flowers that don't even exist on your earth. Oh, and all of those too. Hmm. As you step into this meadow, you find a whole group of people, hundreds, even, <laughs> even thousands of them. You look around, they're all glowing. Hmm. You look a little closer and you realize they are all you. Huh. You, from other lifetimes, they're all looking at you, and there's light coming from all of them, and they're all, they're all in awe <laughs> as they look at you. Because their light is coming on too. Their divinity is waking up too. And it's because of you. You're the leader. You're the one leading the way. Hmm. The designated ascendee you've been called. Hmm. And as your light comes on. Oh, it comes on in all of them, too. And it's changing their lives. Just like it's changing yours. Ah, and you're feeling that, too. Hmm. They're all going a little crazy, just like you. Their bodies are all... <laughs> struggling a bit with the transformation, just like yours is. And you're feeling all of it. Mm. So, maybe you can understand a little bit better why you feel so crazy lately. Mm. So depressed lately, many of you. No. You're dealing with this this unprecedented transformation inside of you. Inside of hmm, all that you are and all that you have ever been. Uh, but look around, look at the light. Look at the light coming from all of these beings that are you. times that huh, the human wonders why it's here. This job is done. Why not just go home? Well, look around. All of these other parts of you. Huh, they're living in their own part of your timescape. You think they're all past and gone, but they're not. That's a human illusion. They're all out there. They're all looking to you. Huh. And you, together, you are beginning this grand reunion. Mm. Who knows what form it's going to take, but do you really want to, to leave in the middle of it? This reunion of you? These aren't other people. Now in a sense they are. Because they, they live in other bodies, in other times. In other places even. And they are all you. Just as much as the human in the mirror is. The human you just saw in that pond. Mm. 
You think of them as something else, as somebody else. You think of your soul as something, someone outside of you. You call it an oversoul. No. Oh. <laughs> There's a little truth to that, but it's also a huge distortion. Your soul. It's you. Hmm. It's much more than you. Hmm. This whole garden is your soul. All of the animals. All of the trees and the flowers and the water and the grass. Ah, this whole human reality that you live in is you, is your soul. Huh. Come back now, look around. These grand beings. Look at the experiences they've had. Oh. Some of them are tall and proud, hmm. having good lives. Others are shy and beat down and very, very difficult lives. Ah. But take another look. Take a look in their hearts. Hmm. There you, you can see in their hearts. Look at the gold there. Look at the gifts they bring to you. Hmm. It's, it's truly far more valuable than any gold. Far more beautiful than any gold. It's right there. Your soul has distilled it into wisdom. That is there. It's this grand gift. And it's all for you. <laughs> oh, it's for them too. But you are the one who gets the most benefit from it right now. And they're all bringing it to you. Watch. And feel. As they come to you. One by one. And hand you their gold. Their gift. There's a lot of them. Those gifts are huge. So this will take a while. Hmm. It might take months of your time here on Earth. But it's happening. It's happening inside of you. You really want to to leave right now, at this point, in the middle of the grand celebration. Mm. Oh, and dear mind. Mm. When they give you their gifts, they're not giving anything up because they are you, you are them. Hmm. They're really blending back into you. And they, they also receive the benefit of all of these gifts. Hmm. So, as they give their gift to you, dear one, know that they are giving it to themselves as well. So let it in, let it happen. 
don't get all righteous about <laughs> not accepting their gifts from them. Because as you accept it, you accept it for them as well. Oh, this, <laughs> this isn't about anybody giving up anything. This is about the grand reunion. The grand reunion of, that you've longed for for so long. The grand celebration. And you're doing it right here on Earth. That's what's incredible. Oh, and so appropriate. Hmm. Once this reunion is done, you truly will be oh, a different being. Hmm. Your life will be full of what the human calls magic. Hmm. You will never, ever face death again. Not in the way you've known it. Hmm. You'll simply choose where to be and be there. And where not to be. And where to go back to. Oh. Oh. We don't want to get into trying to describe it because we're still discovering what that means. Nobody has ever done it before. So, oh. hmm. turn your attention back to the garden. Oh, this, these gifts, you don't have to pay your human attention to them because it's happening. Your soul is there receiving. It's here receiving. Huh. Uh, it's happening. It will continue to happen. For time to come. But understand that with every one of these gifts comes memories. No, they don't show up as stories in your mind. No. Occasionally your mind can remember enough details to make up a little bit of a story that's uh, has, <laughs> has a little bit of reality to it, but no. His memories, they come to you in feelings. Oh. Some of these very difficult lifetimes. They come to you and hand you their gift. Oh, you'll feel the difficulty of those lifetimes. You'll feel the depression. And the darkness and the pain. Hmm. And that's the time to smile, to bow to them and honor them, and to look again into what you're feeling, and notice also the gold, beauty, the wisdom they bring to you from that incredibly difficult lifetime. Uh, and then allow the gratitude. Uh, your soul is so grateful for all of these and you are your soul now, so allow that. Allow these feelings to pass through you. They're not yours. Even the stuff going on in your body, it's not yours. Mm. It's reflecting hmm. your ancestors, many of which were you, many of which are in front of you right now in this garden. Handing you their gifts. 
Things in your body, they come from other lifetimes. They're not actually happening in your body. They're simply being reflected there as you feel their essence. So don't panic when you feel the pains in your body. Those pains come from eons ago, some of them. Simply being reflected from those other times. As you feel the essence of those lifetimes and of the gifts they bring. So don't panic, don't try to fix it, don't run from it. Allow yourself to feel it. Mm. Mm. And truly, if you <laughs> feel like you can't take any more and you want to come home, you can do that. Your soul is the one handling all of this. You can come home if you want to. You will be welcome. Hmm. And we can pretty much promise you that you're going to turn around, look back. Say, oh, I didn't understand. I wish I'd stayed a little longer. Let this happen. Hmm. But either way is fine. We encourage you to stay. Just let it happen. Understand that it's not about you. It is not at all about you or of anything you've done wrong. It's not. It's about It's about this integration and transformation that is happening in you right now. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that is happening. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing you're getting wrong. Yes, it's difficult. It hurts at times. You feel the pain <laughs> that those other bodies, those other <laughs> lifetimes of you, you feel the pain that they felt. You're actually only feeling a shadow of it, a tiny, tiny shadow of it. it feels intense. It hurts a lot sometimes. It's still only a tiny shadow of what they felt, what they are feeling. Because they exist right now, even in other parts of your timeline. So, it's not about you. You've already dealt with most, almost all of the stuff, if not all, from this lifetime. What you feeling now? It's about these other parts of you coming home, bringing you their gifts. They don't even know their gifts. They don't know their value. They're starting to see it through you, because of you. So don't try to... Don't, don't take on all of those pains as though there's something you have to fix and take care of and... <sighs> heal and all of that nonsense. Truly, it's nonsense. 
It doesn't need healed. It needs a hug from you. That's all it needs. A welcome home hug. So come back to these people in this garden. These facets of you. There's one in front of you right now. It's had a very, very difficult lifetime. Hmm. It looks in your eyes. It's so depressed, so hopeless. And its body is in so much pain. In its eyes, see yourself, feel as your body remembers that pain, and just reach out, got your arms, give it a hug, as you do. Breathe it in. Welcome it home. Welcome it home. And as you do feel, as it merges into you, as your own body absorbs that body and all of its gold. All of its golden nectar of wisdom that your soul is distilled. Mm. Feel it. Mm. Now, turn your attention to the next one. Ah, there's a bright, shiny one. It had, it had a beautiful lifetime. Lots of love, lots of joy, lots of money, lots of, oh. Hmm. It's all shiny and bright. Look at it in its eyes. Oh, you feel the pain there too. Hmm. The pain. Oh, because there's always pain in human. There's always things that don't go the way the human thinks they should go or wants them to go. There's always disappointments. There's always a part that doubts, that questions whether any of it was worthwhile or not. Hmm, so you feel that too. But this one had a much different lifetime than that other one. Much happier lifetime. Much more comfortable. Hmm. Feel the shift in your own body. As you hug it. Welcome it home. Hmm. Oh, sometimes you wonder why it is that... One day you're so happy and bright, you feel this divinity coming on inside of you. You feel everything beautiful. <laughs> and the next day you wake up from bad dreams and you're feeling yucky and depressed and miserable and wondering if anything makes any sense or is worth anything. Yeah. That's part of this process. You're bringing home your soul. You, the human, you don't have to do anything but let it happen. Your soul is bringing home all of these parts of you. With each one, you feel them. You feel their lives. You feel their bodies. You feel their minds. You feel their pain. You feel their confusion. You feel their joy and their the beauty in their lives. 
and the darkness you feel at all, or at least a shadow of it, because that's part of the integration process. It's not you. It's not anything wrong with you. It shows up in your body because your body is a, is a dynamic thing. It's not just a machine that you put together with bolts and nuts and screwdrivers and wrenches. It's a dynamic thing. It's constantly reshaping itself to match your consciousness, your energy, <laughs> your emotions even. And as you feel all of those things from these other parts of you, your body shifts and changes to reflect that. Oh, please don't try to stop it from doing that. It needs to happen. It's a beautiful, amazing, wonderful thing. You can take it. You wouldn't be here if you couldn't. Some other aspect of you would be doing this job. And you'd be just another one of them. Hmm. You can. You can do this. Because, well... It's not you doing it, it's your soul. It's you who are allowing it to happen through you. So please let it. It will pass. There's only a certain number of these aspects, these other lifetimes. It takes a little time, we can't do it too quickly or, <laughs> or your body would it wouldn't make it. So we're doing it. Your soul is doing it as quickly as possible. But they have, you know, there's a sense in which these other lifetimes, they have to come through you. Mm, don't take that too, too literally, but there's a certain sense in which they have to come through you. Hmm. So you can fight that. If you really want to, you can pass it off to someone else and come home. But what an honor. What a privilege to be the one who facilitates and allows the integration of all of these other parts of you. Let it happen. When you feel depressed, it's about them, it's not about you. When your body hurts, it's about them, it's not about you. No. <laughs> John's feet hurt. Well, some of those other lifetimes, he walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked until he died from too much walking. Because <laughs> that's how it was, son. And there were quite a few of those walking in the desert, walking in the ice until his feet froze off and fell off. Walking and walking. So many of you have done that too. All of that's coming home now. Mm. Everything else going on in your body. <laughs> it's not from this lifetime. You already dealt with that. Everything else going on, on in your body is from these other lifetimes that you're integrating. Well, in order to integrate something, you have to feel it. 
So here it is. You volunteered for this. And you can do it. <laughs> you can do it because you don't have to do anything except let it happen. Your soul is doing it. Yes, it does hurt sometimes, but it will not hurt enough to destroy you. Your soul won't let it. It will not hurt more than what you can deal with. So let it happen. Let yourself go through this. It has never happened before. It will never happen again. Let yourself go through it. Let yourself have the experience. Hug yourself. Oh. Hug yourself and... Oh, and... And feel the honor. Hmm. <laughs> That all of these, all of these parts of you have for you. Feel the honor that your soul has for you. Ah. can't get it wrong and this process will be complete <laughs> we're not going to even attempt to predict when that might be because <laughs> it's simply not predictable how long does it take you to allow all of these things to be felt. To allow all of these parts of you to come home. Hmm. It won't be that long. So let it happen. The more you can let it happen, the quicker it will be done. Truly. Just let it happen. There's nothing you need to do. Your mind goes, starts running down the path of, I need to do something. How do I speed this up? How do I let it happen? Ah. Be still, mind. Be still. That's all it takes. Be still and know that it's not about you. And it is happening in the perfect timing. And there's nothing that you, dear mind, need to do about it except to be still. You can rest now. You did your job so well. And you can rest, dear mind. That's your job now. To rest. While soul handles the rest. John's mind got stuck for a moment on that unintended pun. <laughs> yes, dear mind, you rest. Your soul will handle everything else. <laughs> ah. Turn your attention back to the garden. Oh, all those animals. Everybody's watching you. You look in that pond again. Look at this grand shining being that you are. Mm. Don't try to shine your light. 
<laughs> it just puts a shade around it. The light is natural. It's who you are. It is shining. Once again, all there is to do is let it happen. Be still, mind. Be still. Be the observer. You don't need to do anything anymore except to be the observer. And then the light shines out. The integrations happen. Ah. And life mm. begins to be graceful and magical. Still human, still has human things pop up here, here and there. But you find you don't have to worry about those things. Because just like the integration of your other lifetimes, your soul is handling it all. And they all just unfold in the perfect flow of divine perfection. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. And so it is. <laughs>